video we told you a little bit about wagon wheel weaving and to make our prayer rug and um, we gave you two different options one was for a hula hoop a wagon wheel weaving and then one was for a wagon wheel weaving using yarn and a paper plate in this video I'm going to show you how to make the wagon wheel weaving with yarn and a paper plate now um, I like to use the Chinette brand paper plate just because they're a little bit thicker and it will um, help you as we're weaving. Uh, you can use a Walmart brand paper plate. They're a little bit thinner though and they're easier to bend. So um, be careful as you're weaving not to let your plate bend as you're weaving because that will distort and warp your weaving. Make it funky, funky shaped. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to turn this paper plate into a weaving loom. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to make a little mark here at the top. And that's going to be my starting place. And then I'm going to kind of measure with my fingers. And I'm going to put a little tick mark, a little line, um, about every three fingers. Now your fingers are probably a little bit smaller than mine, but I'm just going to use my fingers to measure and go around the plate and space it out for every three fingers. And I want to have, when I'm finished, 19 little lines. And so we may have to kind of adjust that because your fingers may be different size than mine. That'll be okay. And then after I've gone all the way around, I want to make sure that I have 19. We need an odd number so that our weaving will alternate correctly. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. All right, so I am good for my next step. So, for my next step, I'm just going to cut on every one of those little tick marks, each one of those little lines. And these little cuts are going to give me a notch to hold my yarn as I'm weaving. Now, I'm doing this kind of fast, so I don't want you to... Um, rush with scissors so you can pause the video while you're cutting there we go so now we have 19 little notches i'm going to turn my plate over and i'm going to number those so i'm going to number them like a clock so i'm going to put one and i'm going to do mine with a sharpie just so that you can see my numbers better one. These numbers are going to help us so that um, you will know exactly where my weaving yarn is going because I won't be there beside you to guide you if you get a little off track. So these will help us to, to keep our weaving on track. And then we're going to take our yarn and I'm going to start up here at the top with number one. And I'm going to Put that piece of yarn through that little notch by number one. And I'm going to take this little piece on the back. And I'm going to tape it. Just to kind of secure it, hold it in place so it doesn't slip out as we're making our weaving loom. So, I'm going to take that yarn. And I don't want to pull it too tight because that will pull the plate and make it want to curve. So I don't want to pull it too tight. But I'm going to go from number one 
to number 11. I'm going to slip that in that little notch. Then I'm going to go over to 10. Then I'm going to go up to number 19. So it's making a, a big, tall, skinny X. I'll bring it all the way into that little notch. Then I'm going to go over to 18. And I turn my plate when I'm weaving, but just because I think it helps me. <laughs> um, so then I'm going to go to nine. To go from nine to eight. I'm going to turn my plate. I'm going from eight to 17. From 17, I'm going to go to 16. From 16, I'm going to go to seven. From seven, I'm going to go to six. From six, I'm going to go to 15. From 15, I go to 14. From 14, I go to five. From five, I go to four. Get some more yarn out for me. There we go. From four, I'm going to go over to 13. From 13, I'm going to go to 12. From 12, I go to number three. And from three, I'm going to go to two. Now, two is not going to have any place to go because I've gone all the way around the plate. So I'm going to take some yarn. I would make it about the length of my arm. Okay, so when you've got your yarn about the length of your arm, you can cut that yarn off of your ball of yarn or your skein. Okay, this thread is going to be my weaving thread. These threads are the warp threads. They make up the... The weaving loom. Okay, so I'm going to kind of hold these all together and I'm going to go straight down between number 11 and 12. I'm going to go between those two little guys. Okay, I'm going to spread them apart, kind of hold it together like that. So I'm going to go between 11 and 12. I'm going to go under the whole bunch and I'm going to pull it out at the top okay I'm going to do that again okay so I'm going to go between 11 and 12 take that whole little bunch of yarn slide it under there and then pull it out at the top okay and that just kind of wraps around all those pieces of yarn and kind of gathers them in the center. Now I'm going to weave. So if I take my little bundle of yarn, I'm going to go over number one, and then I go under number 19. And then I'm going to go over 18. And I'll go under 17. I'm going to go over 16 and under 15. My thread is going over number 14, under 13, over 12, under 11. Now, I have a nice little bunch of yarn that I've woven so far, and I'm just going to take that yarn and pull it toward the center. Now, I don't have to pull it super tight. I just want to make sure there's no um, little gaps or holes. And whoa, where did my weaving yarn go? So, in order to find out where's that weaving yarn coming out, I lift the yarn up, and I can see it went under number 11. So if it goes under number 11, I'm going to go over 10 and under 9. Over 8, 
under seven, over six, under five, over four, under three, over two, under one, okay? And I can even look back and I can check my work before I pull it. So I went under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. Okay, then I pull it. And I'll need to lift that piece of yarn up to see where did I last take that piece of yarn. Well, it went under number one. And so then you're gonna keep weaving. You're always gonna go under, over, under, over, under, over. And before I pull that yarn, I would double check my work. And make sure you went under, over, under, over, under, over each time. Then pull it toward the center. Remember, you don't have to pull it super tight. You just wanna get rid of those little holes. And then lift your yarn up to see where did it go last. It went under eight. So I'm gonna go under, over, under, over. And that's gonna be my pattern throughout the whole weaving, under, over, under, over. Check your work and then pull it. Now, as I'm weaving, um, I'm going to begin to run out of yarn. So in order to tie on a new piece of yarn, I'm going to pick my color and I'm going to take the end of my weaving yarn here and I'm gonna line it up with the other color. Put them end to end. Okay. And when your yarn is about as long as your finger, that's when you wanna stop and you wanna tie it onto another piece of yarn. So, I'm gonna take some red or pink. I'm going to line them up so they're end to end. And I'm going to make a loop. So I'm going to make a loop. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to take the two ends and go over and through that loop. So... Right now, it kind of reminds me of a pretzel. And then I'm just going to pull those two together nice and tight because you don't want your ends coming apart. Okay, and then you'll have these little bunny ears at the top. And we don't need those, so we're just going to snip those little bunny ears off. And... I'm going to go ahead and cut off my thread, my yarn, for my weaving. And I would make it about as long as my arm. If I get too much yarn out, it might get tangled. So you want to just cut off enough that you can manage. So I've got my weaving yarn. And I'm going to pull up to find out where did my yarn last go. Well, it went under 17. So then I just go over 16, under 15, keep going under, over, under, over, under, over. Now this is going to take some time, but God is calling us to spend time with him. So as you're weaving, use this time to talk to God. And tell him, God, if there's anything in my life that is not pleasing to you, any part that is stained, any part that's broken, my failures, my doubts, my fears, dear God, I want to take those and lay those at your feet. And 
and I want to leave those insecurities, those doubts, those fears, those sins nailed to the cross. Because once you've forgiven me, it is forgiven and it is like I am a new person. And the devil will try to bring out your past and remind you and call you by your past sins. But God calls you by your name. And once those sins and failures are nailed to the cross, he has forgotten those. So I've run out of yarn. I'm going to take these two ends, make a loop, put those two ends through the loop. It looks kind of like a pretzel. Pull them tight. Snip the bunny ears. Pull out yarn that's about the length of your arm and cut it. And sometimes, oh, I lift the yarn up and see where did I go last? It went under eight, so I'm going to go over seven. Sometimes we mess up. Once we start following Jesus, we might, we might slip up. And the devil will tell you, well, it's, it's a mess, it's all messed up, and it's hopeless. But if you make a mistake, like right here, I went over number three, and over number two, I went over, over. And then on number 19, I went over, over. Well, if you make a mistake, then you just go back. It is not a lost cause. God wants us to come to him with all our, all our flaws. And he wants to help us make it right. And the Holy Spirit will guide you as you spend time in prayer and reading and talking to God. And the more you listen, the more time you spend talking to God and praying, well, it will become easier. You will become stronger and more rooted in your faith. Until it's just, it's part of you. It just becomes easier. Now, you're going to keep weaving until your weaving is like this. Okay, we're maybe, maybe an inch from the, the rim of the plate. And I've got this one last loose thread here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it around uh, my number 13. And I'm going to make a double knot. So I tied it in a knot once. I'm going to tie it in a knot twice. And then I'm just going to snip that end off of there. I don't need that anymore. And I'm going to take my weaving off of the loom. Okay. And I'm just going to take off a little bit at a time. I'm going to kind of push my weaving together a little bit. I'm going to take my yarn here and I'm going to wrap it around this little loop. I'm going to tie a knot. And then I'm going to tie another knot, making a double knot. And then I'm just going to cut that loop. And I'm going to cut these ends so they're the same size. 
here we go and then I've got a little tassel now um, I'm going to do that all the way around my weaving now if you don't like the tassel let's see I'm going to come over here to my number one and show you what to do if you don't want tassels you can just take your thread and what you would do is you would just cut this if you don't want tassels you just cut this apart and then you'd have a little thread like this and you would just take it and you would tie it on to the last thread here and you would just do that with a double knot so you just tie it once and then just tie it again so it's a double knot and then you would just cut it down here close so you didn't have this big long piece. And that would be if you don't want to have tassels, you do it this way. But I like the tassels, <laughs> so I'm going to leave the tassels on mine. But then um, if you want to make a, a rug so you can sit on and do your prayers, um, he would make four of these, and then you would just... Take a thread and tie these two together. I would do probably three or four little threads here and then three or four little threads here. So you've got all four of them um, kind of sewn together to make your prayer mat. Okay. Um, and I pray that as you're using that prayer mat, that God blesses you he anoints you and he lets you know who you are in him. And he, um, he prepares your heart and he arms you because you are going to do great and mighty things in his name. And that's my prayer for you. And I love you and I hope y'all enjoy making your prayer rugs. And I look forward to seeing y'all next year at camp. Y'all have a great summer. Love you.